A century ago, the year 1913, a young lad from England Jesse Brand, takes hand of a young lady Evelyn, in marriage. The matrimonial ceremony is held at a Baptist mission church, located in one of the remotest places in South India, Chathamagalam, a small town in the then district of Salem. The wedding is presided over by Pastor D. Malig, who was already a missionary there. This English Christian marriage had a unique feature in it. The bridegroom gifted a ring with the words, trust and triumph instead of their name. The young juvenile missionaries began the life with the belief that they can achieve anything in life through trust. This is a story about their trust, struggle, and triumph of the missionary couple. Jesse Brand, by March of 1912, had taken up an opportunity to work as a missionary in Kali Hills. He stayed in the hut provided by the Hindu priest and carried on with his medical service. When Jesse Brand proposed to marry Evelyn, the tender sweetheart accepted the suggestion to work for the Lord, hand in hand with a committed man. Because Jesse Brand felt that the tribes in the hill would be misled with any display of wealth or luxury, he went up to the mountains to build a very simple three-room home with a small cook house outside. It was to this home she was carried on her wedding day in a type of wicker basket. The last few miles were in a downpour of rain. It was August 1913. Together, Jesse and Evelyn planned their mission, asking God to guide them in the task they have been obligated. Carly Hills is spread over 287 square kilometers. More than 100 small villages have to be ministered. They would camp together in one village for ten days, come back to their house on the hilltop, and would set on another camp. They continued their commission, even when Evelyn was conceived. On foot or hill pony they trekked all over the mountains. <laughs> in 1914 and 1917, two children were born to the brands, Paul and Connie. They grew up as young gazelles on the mountains of death. They trekked with their parents and were a part of the team. It is said that there was a devastating attack of plague in 1919. The Hindu priest and his wife, who had earlier contributed their land for the mission, were among the people succumbed by the plague. Before their death, they handed their nine-month-old baby girl to the brand couple. At that time, was given the name. <laughs> When Paul was nine, and Connie six, they were left with their relatives in England to pursue their education. According to the social taboo, if a child was identified to pose danger for the family, the child would be wrapped in a winnower or a clay pot and thrown in the garbage. The missionaries started a home for such destitute children. I
Jesse was a man with many talents. He was a doctor, dentist, preacher, teacher, counselor, agronomist, civil engineer all put to use in ministering to the people and helping them improve their lives. Strong, energetic Jesse was rarely ill. He died on July the 15th, 1929. <laughs> Although Evelyn was left lonely by the loss, she never wanted to give up on her mission. It was hard without Jessie, but she was soon into the routine of medical clinics, teaching discipline, rebuking, and exhorting all over the range of mountains. Meanwhile, Bran's daughter, Connie had become a trained pharmacist. Their son, Paul was gaining a reputation for his work in leprosy. Her nice Ruth, who was in her last year of medical training. Dr. Paul Brand became a famous surgeon. He also developed new ways of treating leprosy. He was the first physician to appreciate that leprosy did not cause the rotting away of tissues, but that it was the loss of the sensation of pain which made sufferers susceptible to injury. In 1946, he was invited to join the staff of the Christian Medical College and Hospital in Valor, India. On the very first day, uh, but my first shock when I began to enter the hospital, big fine hospital, was at the gate where I saw scores of desperately deformed uh, patients. Uh, they weren't coming into the hospital, but they were begging from the people who left and entered through the hospital gates, and they were getting money just by pity. They were holding out clawed fingers, and clawed hands. They were holding out uh, hands that had no fingers. And they were holding out, uh, at least they were sitting and displaying deeply ulcerated uh, feet. And I said to a, an older doctor as he was going in, I said, how do we allow all these terrible wounds to stay outside the hospital. And uh, he said, we, I said, we should take them inside and treat them and cure some of these things. And he smiled at my ignorance. He said, oh, these are just lepers. Almost as though he was talking about some inferior uh, race of, of, of people. And uh, he said, if we took them into the hospital, every other patient would run away. People are so scared they call it, the local name around there, they call it the living death. 
because they see that the, the limbs, the hands and feet are gradually eroded away little by little and uh, it's not looked upon as a disease, it's looked upon as a curse. And uh, so I, I, I tried to look impressed. He said, in any case, if, <laughs> he, he said, in any case, I can see that you're looking at these clawed hands, you shouldn't be thinking about operating because they have, all these leprosy patients have non-healing flesh. And uh, if you make an incision for, an, for a, a, uh, an operation, you're simply going to add another wound which won't heal. Well, this, this just seemed instinctively to me to be so ridiculous and so such a terrible thing for a scientific person to be talking about, but nevertheless, this is what the view was, and it became, to me, a personal challenge. In 1950, with a donation from a missionary woman, Brand established the New Life Center, Valor, as a model rehabilitation center for Hansen's disease patients. In 1953, Evelyn, who was affectionately called Granny, by the Hill Tribe, suffered a fall in her home in the mountains and fractured her hip. In 1963, at the age of 84, she moved to a third range of mountains. Again, she had the same pattern of extensive trekking on a small hill pony, walking with two bamboo poles for support, and living in very simple conditions. She slowly went down following that injury and quietly slipped into the presence of her Lord on 18th of December, 1974, at the age of 95. Her frail, wasted body was carried back and buried beside her beloved Jesse here on the mountains of death. Dr. Paul Brand in 1966, after 19 years of service in India, he moved to the USA on invitation to take up the position of Chief of Rehabilitation Branch at the National Hansen's Disease Center at Carville, USA. During his career, Dr. Paul Brand received many awards and honors. He was awarded the Huteria Professorship of the Royal College of Surgeons in 1952, and, the Lasca Award in 1960. Queen Elizabeth honored him with the title of, the Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1961. At the turn of the century, he came back to Carly Hills to relive his childhood memories. This was a place where he had walked the rough roads, with his mama and papa saw them preparing the way for the Lord to come into the lives of the tribes. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, they that dwell in the land of the mountain of death, upon them if the light shined. He, died on July 8, 2003, after several weeks in a coma following a fall in his Seattle home.